Did you know that we have channel memberships now? If you'd like to help support this channel, get some exclusive Kawabana emotes to use in the comments, as well as an exclusive badge by your name, click that join button now to find out more. Every bit of support really helps. Thanks guys. The first taxis started to run in the Tokyo area in 1912, and in the decades following, they slowly became more prevalent and common throughout not just the capital, but the country at large. By the 1950s, however, taxis had started to gain somewhat of a bad reputation, and for good reason. This week, we're going to take a look at the Showa era's rather frightening taxi problem, a little something they called the Kamikaze Taxis. It all began in the 1950s. As Japan worked to rebuild after the war, the entire country became more modernised and, most importantly here, more motorised. The number of cars on the roads drastically increased, and road congestion was a daily headache for all involved. Naturally, not everyone owned cars however, and taxis were a favoured method of transport to get around the busy cities. The taxi industry at the time, however, was nothing like it is today. Drivers worked on commission, and anyone could show up to do the job. Because these drivers earned money based on how many customers they could ferry around the city in a day, naturally, many took to cutting corners to get the job done. What's the best way to get more money? Get more customers. How do you get more customers? By driving faster to get them to where they need to be so you can then pick up more. You can probably see where this is going already. Taxi drivers at the time started pushing themselves further and further. They cut corners, literally, driving recklessly on the roads to get their customers to where they needed to be in record time, so they could pick up the next fare. They ran red lights, they aggressively overtook other cars on the roads, they ignored speed limits and did whatever was necessary to get from point A to point B in record time so they could pick up the next customer and make as much money as they possibly could. Over time, these reckless drivers came to be dubbed as Kamikaze Taxis, or the Kamikaze Special Attack Force. They drove with little regard for their own lives and did whatever it took to get from point A to point B as fast as humanly possible. It's uncertain who exactly came up with the term, but the March 4th, 1956 issue of Shukan Shincho featured an article with a foreigner who was surprised by the speed and recklessness of Tokyo's taxi drivers, and this foreigner reportedly described them as kamikaze taxis. Whether this foreigner was the first person to ever apply the term is unknown, but after that, it certainly became more commonplace. The root of the problem, of course, lay in the working conditions that caused these drivers to act so recklessly. As I mentioned earlier, taxi drivers at the time were paid on commission, so the more people they drove around, the more money they got. Their base salaries were extremely low, making it necessary to compete to get as many customers as they possibly could to make ends meet. They also had quotas they had to meet, and if they didn't meet them, they would be fired. All of this came to a head in January 1958, when a University of Tokyo student was walking in front of the university one day. A kamikaze taxi mounted the sidewalk and hit the boy, who was captain of the soccer team at the time, and instantly killed him as it sped to its next destination. A few days later, a newspaper published an article featuring the boy's father, who worked as a fishmonger, with the headline, Listen to the grief of the fishmonger. This brought nationwide attention to not only the incident in which a promising young man lost his life in an instant, but the growing problem of reckless taxi drivers, one of whom had now taken a life. Until this point, the kamikaze taxis had been seen as a nuisance, sure, but nobody had ever been involved in a serious accident, and so most people tutted but still looked the other way. With the death of the soccer captain from Tokyo University, however, outrage was swift and 
the public outcry too much to ignore. The Taxi Labor Union and other related organizations began sweeping reforms of the industry to rid itself of its kamikaze reputation, and they began so immediately. Amongst these changes, the quota system was abolished entirely, and the distance drivers could travel in one day was also limited to 350 kilometers. After that, a driver was no longer allowed to work for the rest of the day. Over time, this number was gradually decreased as well. By the following year, private taxis were approved and started to become more commonplace. And to get a job as one of these privately owned drivers, you needed to be recognized as a skilled and sensible driver. Without this recognition, drivers could not get hired. And so, in conjunction with the sweeping reforms taking place across the entire industry, the kamikaze taxis disappeared almost overnight. If you were not a safe driver, then you weren't getting any work. The Tokyo Olympics were also just around the corner, and Japan wanted to project a safe, modern and upright image to the world. The road traffic laws were strictly enforced, not just in Tokyo, but all over the country. And if you drove recklessly, even more so as a taxi driver, you were swiftly prosecuted and removed from the roads. And just like that, the kamikaze taxis disappeared from the roads, although not entirely from people's minds. They've even been used in various Japanese media over the years, with kamikaze taxi drivers playing roles in movies, manga, novels, and even the 1999 video game Crazy Taxi. But it sadly took the death of a young man before anyone stepped up to curb the problem, which then disappeared almost immediately. Why wasn't it done sooner? Well, I'm sure we all know the answer to that. But what do you guys think about this one? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.